A ping pong ball is thrown to the west at 10 meters per second towards a school bus traveling at 6 meters per second to the east. If the collision is one dimensional and elastic, what are the final velocities at the end of the collision? In this problem, there is no mass given. That means uh, we probably do not need the mass of the bus nor the mass of the ping pong ball. The only important thing is that the ping pong ball is so much, much lighter than a bus. Which means, uh, what do you think the final velocity of the bus is? The bus's velocity at the end must still be 6 meters per second to the east. Because the bus is so much heavier than the ping pong ball. So the bus is virtually unaffected by the ping pong ball. That means that in this problem, there is only one unknown we need to find, which means that we just need one equation. Now we have two choices. There's, I mean, actually three choices. We have the momentum conservation, we have the kinetic energy conservation, and uh, we have the approaching speed equals to the separating speed. Which one do you think you can use? If, if there's no mass given. Of course, the last one. This is the only one that does not require a mass. So let's see, the approaching speed. What is the approaching speed? It's this, the velocity is 6 and the negative 10. So the velocity difference is 6 minus negative 10, so it's uh, 16 meters per second. That means uh, the separating speed must also be 16 meters per second. So if this one moves at V1F, then V2F must be V1F plus 16. And the V1F equals to 6, so if we add 16 to it, the ping pong ball must have a final velocity that is 22 meters per second. Because it's a positive, it must be to the east. Notice that the ping pong ball acquired a much faster speed than its old speed. This is sometimes called the slingshot effect. The much lighter object acquires a faster speed through a collision like this one. Now let's try another problem. A 1 kilogram card traveling at 2 meters per second collides with a 2.5 gram ping pong ball at rest. 1 kilogram is 400 times 2.5 grams. So it is not unreasonable for us to say that the card is almost unaffected by the ping pong ball. If this collision is a one-dimensional elastic collision, what are the final velocities at the end of the collision? Since the cart is almost unaffected by this collision, we can say that the cart continues to move to the left at the same 2 meters per second, which means uh, I can say it is negative 2 meters per second, so V2F equals to negative 2. Because it is a one-dimensional elastic collision, we can also use the approaching speed equals to the separating speed to find the V1F. The approaching speed is uh, the difference in the velocities. The velocity is 0 and uh, negative 2. So 0 minus negative 2, the approaching speed is 2, so the separating speed is also 2. So if this one moves at V1F, then the V2F must equal to V1F plus the separating speed 2. And this will give us the V1F is negative 4 meters per second. So the ping pong ball must travel back that way at 4 meters per second after the collision. So in this particular case, 
the ping pong ball starting at rest before the collision gets twice the velocity of the much heavier cart after the collision. Here I have a ping pong ball hung at the end of a 0.75 meter long string. This two steel ball combo is also hung at the end of a 0.75 meter long string. The steel balls combined has about 400 times the mass of the ping pong ball. The collision between the two should be very elastic. So if the ping pong ball is at rest before the collision, the ping pong ball should be traveling at twice the speed of the steel ball combo immediately after the collision. It can be hard to tell because the balls are like pendulums. They slow down as they swing higher. There is also non-negligible air resistance on the ping pong ball.